Hey, this is Antonio. Welcome back to my channel, Working Out Some Fighting Words. In this video, I want to just touch on what's been going on with Deontay Wilder. Um, lately, we've been seeing him a lot hitting pads with a, a fellow fighter and an ex-opponent of his, uh, Malik Scott. Um, I'm just looking at the pad work, and I'm just really going to jump right into this. I'm just looking at the pad work, and I'm seeing some things from Deontay Wilder that I've never seen before. I'm seeing more speed, I'm seeing a lot more power. It's one thing when Deontay Wilder would hit the pads that JDs was holding, or you know someone else was holding, and they're much smaller men. So naturally, when a guy his size hits the pads, yeah, the, the guy's arm is gonna go flying back or something like that. But when you look at Malik Scott, they're almost the same size. Matter of fact, Malik Scott might actually be bigger than Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder is like a, I don't know, like a half a foot taller or something like that. But Malik Scott is a, a thick guy. He's really burly. And, you know, Deontay Wilder is very narrow and thin. So to see Malik Scott hands go flying back every time Deontay Wilder hits it, it just should let you know the amount of power that he's generating and the amount of focus that he has right now. He seems very focused. He seems uh, very determined. And he also seems in great shape. It doesn't seem like, like he's just hitting pads. It doesn't seem like he's just been hitting a bag. Uh, which, by the way, I also want to touch on, you know, with his, his one of his former trainers. Um, I don't want to get into, you know, all the names and everything like that. But you, you all know who we fired. Um, he said that Deontay Wilder hardly ever hit pads. He also said that Deontay Wilder um, didn't hit the bag or didn't do anything like that. Also, he said he didn't do road work. Well, I don't know if it's Malik Scott that has just, you know, given Wilder a new regimen in his training, or maybe these are things that he's always done, or maybe he hasn't done to the fullest, I'll say. Um, however, it clearly looks to me that he's doing these things now. Um, one of the things I've always said, at least with Wilder, is this. The minute somebody teaches Wilder how to attack the body, he's going to be 10 times more dangerous. And the first thing that I noticed was not only how sharp and crisp Deontay Wilder looked on the pass with Malik Scott, but also that Malik Scott was teaching him and telling him to go to the body. When you have a guy that powerful, that much impact in his punches going to the body, imagine what a straight right hand to the body would do to any of his opponents. Imagine what a liver shot would do to any of his opponents. I mean, yeah, you, you can, you know, bam, baby, good night, as Deontay Wilder loves to say, but just a sneaky liver shot, what that would do to an opponent. Not only could that just take an opponent out completely, but it could also do what Deontay Wilder wants for them all to do, drop their hands, drop their guard. Now imagine if that happens and there's no protection up top. There's no protection with, with you know, covering the head or, or anything like that. Or if you're in so much pain from a body shot, that you can't properly slip and weave, you're literally a dead duck. Like that, you're literally just a dead duck. Dead duck in the sea. Um, and that's what I see Malik Scott and Deontay Wilder working on. Another thing that I noticed, which is a great thing, because one of Deontay Wilder's, Wilder's weaknesses in the past has been that he's a kind of a one, not kind of, he's a one trick pony. Everybody knows what to look for, it's the power hand. It's not a secret, and he, he, he isn't even shy to tell you that's literally what he's coming to do um, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, what his game plan is. But with Malik Scott, there's combinations. Combinations open up a, a lot of doors, and not just this, this door that comes here, where Deontay Wilder hits you right here and you go to sleep. But if he can pierce you here, if he can pierce you here, if he can hit you to the shoulder and back you up and get you out of position, things like that. If he can jerk and just have you react because you not you now not know what he's aiming for, it's more psychological now. That means he has a lot more leeway to play with in terms of getting an opponent out of there. So I, I think it's great to see him, you know, doing combinations and not just focusing so much on that one punch because I, I don't think he's perfected it, but over 40 fights and like 40 knockouts, you know, there's not so much more he can learn on that, but around that, 
to set that up even more, it's almost limitless in terms of uh, possibilities. Almost limitless. One of the most beautiful things I saw Wilder do was a double hook to the body, which was pretty impressive. You know, people love to say that Deontay Wilder, you know, he's, he's like some novice fighter. You don't win a, a bronze medal by being a novice fighter. Is he the prettiest fighter in the ring when he's, when he's fighting? No. He's not the prettiest fighter in the ring. He's not Muhammad Ali. He's not like Swift on his toes. He's not like some cat or anything like that. But the man knows what he's doing. I mean, he's had over 40 fights and he's been successful in like 40 fights. He's only not been successful in one fight. Even the first fight with, uh, with Fury, people would say that he was losing all those rounds. It doesn't matter. He's still knocked him down twice. You know, and if you look at that count, he clearly won that fight. If you just go by the referee's count, it was like 13 seconds or something like that. He clearly won the fight. But I'm just saying that he, he definitely has more technique than what he's always been given credit for. Um, and luckily for him, he has like a strong mental... He's, he's strong mentally. You know, he won't let things like that get into his head or anything like that. Or especially when opponents will tell you, well, we know what he's going to do. He's going to just do the same thing he's been doing in all his other fights. Yeah, he's been doing the same thing, and yet we still haven't run across one who's been able to stop him. Yes, we have Fury, but again, we're going to put that to the side. You know, that that is another video. Believe me, that is coming. But right now, I, I'm just loving Deontay Wilder with uh, Malik Scott. And I also saw in a post that he's now a permanent mem member of Team Wilder, which is a great thing. I don't exactly know where JD fits in in, in this scenario, to be honest with you. But overall... I like seeing Deontay Wilder with Malik Scott. Um, and another thing that they have that I do like is chemistry. I think some of the best fighters are successful because their trainers are close to them. Like there's a chemistry there. If you look at uh, look at Mayweather, look at Roger. You know, there's a chemistry there. You look at uh, Timothy Bradley and he had Teddy Atlas in his corner. You know, he's like, we're firemen, we, we run into the fire. And you look at through Timothy Bradley's eyes, and you can see that he believes every single word that's spoken to him. And not only did he believe it, but he went out there and did what was spoken over him. So I think when you have a trainer that can mesh well with, uh, with the fighter, I think it only brings more out of that fighter because there's a belief that's coming from the trainer that's installed into the fighter that will elevate the fighter. And at least from right now, I mean, granted, you know what you could say, well, it's just a few videos on Instagram that you're seeing those two training together. Yeah, but you could also see some chemistry. You can also see some chemistry. If you want to see a place in, with, with fighters where you can tell where there's no chemistry, look at pad work. Look at pad work. You, you can tell a lack of chemistry when you watch somebody hit pads because the amount of instruction that's going into the pad work. Everything will need instruction if there's no chemistry. However, if there is chemistry, well, then you understand his body movements. You understand his footwork. So when he moves, you move. When you twist, he twists. And when he twists, you twist. There's a chemistry there. And you understand each other. But you understand each other physically. You understand each other psychologically because you're not even speaking. But you just you know each other. And you can tell that they're spending time together outside of boxing just to know each other. And that's also to build up that comfort within each other. So if I, if they're in a fight and he says, you got this guy, you can beat this guy, but you might be saying, well, I've lost like, you know, it's only been four rounds, but I lost all three of these rounds. And he's saying you can do it. He knows something about you because he knows you. You guys have a chemistry together. So you, that's just gonna work out, honestly. I, I, I just see that working out when there's a chemistry and it looks like there's a chemistry. I mean, they're, they're two big guys. He's also, Malik Scott is also a fighter. But I've also looked at his Instagram and I see him working with a lot of people, especially kids. So that not only tells me that he's a, he's a real teacher, but also tells me that he's gentle if he can teach kids. That means that he has patience and he's gentle. Now, you couple that with the fact that he is a real life prize fighter, and then you put him in there with a, another prize fighter who wants to learn who wants to grow, who wants to be better, and is willing to put in the time to be all those things, I think you get nothing but success. 
But you tell me what you think down below, and as always, please like and subscribe.